Hello guys and welcome back to the How To Animate YouTube channel. So I thought it might be cool to do an extra video this week and it might turn into a regular thing. Just little quick tip videos uh, showing you various stuff in Maya. So this video is going to be about how to render out your animations in Arnold, make them look nice for your showreel. And when you're first starting out in 3D animation and you get together your first showreel, you figure out how to play Blast out of Maya and you manage to put it all together and send it off, a lot of the times it won't be nicely presented. So this is uh, just a very quick method of rendering out your uh, animation to show it in its best light. So for this we're going to use uh, animation of mine that I did recently. This didn't make it onto my showreel, so it hasn't got anything set up on it yet. I've just set it to grayscale because a lot of the time you won't have the textures for models and stuff, but even if you do it works in exactly the same way. So if we was to play blast this out, wouldn't look particularly good, or, you know, it's just my default lighting looks a bit horrible. So let's make this look nice. So first thing we're going to do is create a ground plane. Just going to scale that up and rotate it so that it matches the line of the horizon like so. Okay, so Arnold. Arnold comes with Maya already, uh, the recent versions of Maya. It used to be Mental Ray, but they changed that to Arnold now. So you can find Arnold up here. If you do not see this, then you're going to need to make sure you've got the plugin loaded in. So go to Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and down in this list somewhere there will be Arnold. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but this is where you need to be looking. Okay, so we go to Arnold Render, and that has rendered out the current frame. As you see, it's completely black. That's because we have no lights in the scene yet. So what we're going to do is go up to this button here. This is our render settings. We're going to go across to Arnold Render. Uh, we're going to go to Environment, and we're going to go to Background, Legacy, and we are going to create a sky shader. So now if we go back up to Render, we should start to see the character emerge. Okay, so you're able to change the background color here. And if you can bring it down to a nicer kind of gray color if you like. If you go to down to render stats, you can turn on cast shadows, and this creates a nice shadow under your character, like so. And you can increase the intensity here. So as you can see, he's still kind of dark. This is because we only have one light in the scene, that is the sky at the moment. So it gives us a good start, this would be our fill light. So let's create some more lights and balance this out. So to create more lights in the scene, go up to create lights, and we're going to be using directional lights. And if you can't see the light here, make sure you go to show lights, like so. It's going to come in very small at first. With directional lights, it's not based on scale, so you can scale these up as big as you want, and it won't actually affect the lighting at all. But you'll be able just to position it better. So you want to create a main light. Okay, and this is going to come down from this direction here. It's going to hit the character and illuminate the left side here. As you can see the rest of it's very very dark at the moment if that's because we need to go to shadows and you can just brighten up the shadow color to something that you like and it's just a case of playing around with these values so if you find that your shadows are still too dark you can go ahead and create another directional light that will act as your fill light so if we look at the outliner these are our three lights that we're using we've got the transform one which is basically the sky uh, directional light 1 which is our main light and directional light 2 which is our fill light. So it's just a case of playing around with the values of these until you, you get something that feels right. You could add a bit of blue and red to these, whatever you like, just to give it a bit of tint. Uh, once you're happy with this, you're going to have something that looks quite nice already. Um, so next we're going to check the resolution of our scene. So if you go back to the render settings here, and we're going to do a full setup on this now. So we're going to render in PNG. If you would like to animate with alpha, say you wanted to do a background later on in, in post-production, then you'd have to render out as a TIFF. But PNG will just give you, uh, won't have alpha on it, doesn't support alpha. So you're going to set this to name number extension. And this will highlight the start and end frame. So Go ahead and put your values in. This is 0 to 131. 
So the prefix here is quite important. You're going to need to set a name that you want the images to be. If we go down further, renderable camera will be whichever one you have currently rendered here. So I'm using camera three, so put camera three in here. Uh, the presets you want to set to HD 180. You could up the resolution if you wanted, but 72 generally work quite well. If you come across the Arnold renderer, and we're going to set these to four or five, depending on how long you want to wait for your render. Anything lower than that, you're going to start to get a bit of grain, won't look as nice. You have the option to do motion blur if you want, or you could um, do that in post if you wanted. System, don't worry about system and all this stuff. Don't worry about this, this is all sort of advanced stuff. We won't be using that. And that is pretty much it. We are ready to render. So the way batch rendering used to work was you'd go to render, batch render, but that doesn't work anymore. The way you render in R is kind of hidden. It tries to make you kind of buy the full version for some reason. So what you want to do is go down to render sequence options. Make sure you have camera three or whichever camera you are going to be rendering here and simply go render sequence and you'll see a window pop up here and you'll be able to check that everything's okay with your render and it will just go through frame by frame and put them into your images folder. So once your render is finished the images will appear in documents Maya projects default images this is the default place they go so as long as you haven't changed that path then this is where they'll be. There's a number of different ways you can compile these into a movie. Uh, I'll show you a couple of free ones. Uh, this program is called Virtual Dub and it's free to download. Very good little program. Uh, to compile this into a movie just simply drag your first frame to here and you'll see that the frames compile automatically into a movie. Uh, there are a couple of things you need to do. You need to go up to video frame rate and set this to 30 if that's what you've animated to and then to output this as an AVI just go to file save as AVI and save it wherever you like. The other bit of free software I can recommend is called OpenShot and this is a free bit of uh, video editing software. Uh, it's not as advanced as something as After Effects but it does the job and it's free so what you can do here is if you go to project files you can do exactly the same thing just drag in here and it will ask you would you like to compile as an Im image sequence and you just say yes and then you've got a movie of your images and that is pretty much it guys so happy rendering and hopefully this will improve your the presentation of your showreels thanks for watching